Lesson 6.3 tonight, <clears throat> we're going to be doing what's called the angle angle. Remember how we did side angle side and stuff like that, and we use these letters. So angle angle similarity postulate. All right, so I'm going to tell you what the angle angle similarity postulate says, and then I'm going to give you an example of it, a picture of it, and then we're going to go in straight into some examples. So we're going to try to get this all done in one video. All right, here we go. Angle angle similarity postulate says, if two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles in a second triangle, then the triangles are similar. Okay, that makes sense with what it says. Angle, angle, so I only need two, I don't need three. Similarity, we're talking about similar triangles. And it's postulate, it's not a theorem. Okay, it's one of these things we can't prove, but it definitely makes sense if we think through it. All right? Remember all the ones we had before? I'm gonna write them off to the side here. Side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and HL. Top three are postulates, these two are theorems, these are all for congruence. And remember we said that angle side side, or we usually call it side side angle, doesn't work unless the angle's a right angle, that's when we called it HL. And we also said angle 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 doesn't work. Okay, so this is where angle 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 does work. But we technically don't even need the third angle. The reason we don't need the third angle is because of the third angle theorem. Okay, if two angles are congruent in one triangle to two angles in another, then automatically the third angle is congruent anyways. So I don't really need the third one because I could get it really easy. So all I need is two, and this is what it looks like. So if I've got two triangles, I've got two marks here and two marks here, so that's one set of congruent angles. I've got one mark here and one mark here, so that's another set of congruent angles. Remember, pause the video if you need to so that you can write this stuff down, get this into your notes. Some of you are coming to class without very good notes, okay? But if we get something like this, we can say these triangles are similar. So we want to write a similarity statement, okay? So triangle ABC. Now, really, I can write the first triangle in any order I want, okay? But I just went alphabetical ABC. It is similar, okay? Remember our symbol for similar. Now, we have to match the order up correctly. We can't just say X, Y, Z. It might be right, it might not. So let's think through what the correct order is. So A, I put that first, it has two marks on it. So I come over here, X has two marks, so it's gotta come first. B has one mark, so I gotta come over here. Z has to come next, and then Y. Okay, if you said X, Y, Z, you'd be wrong. And now we could also talk about how we have proportional sides, because once we have similar shapes, we have proportional sides. So AC matches up with X, Y. AB matches up with XZ, BC matches up with YZ, and we could set up our proportions and solve for that. We're going to do that at the end of the lesson. I'm going to show you some examples of that. All right? So that's it. That's our angle angle similarity posture. It's not real complicated, but let's do a little bit of review. So what are some easy ways to get congruent angles? I want you to think about that. I want you to, yeah, I want you to pause the video and write some down. Okay? And then I'm going to come back and we're going to talk through some of them. Maybe you'll even think of some that I didn't think of right away. Okay, so what are some easy ways to get congruent angles? I want you to pause, I want you to write a few answers down, and I want you to come back and see if you thought of all the ones that I'm going to write down. <clears throat> Alright, so, easy ways. Um, reflexive property of congruence. That's a really easy one. Okay, so if you didn't have that written down, add it into your notes. Okay, we're going to use this today. All right. Uh, right angle congruence theorem. All right angles are congruent to each other. We're going to use this one today. Vertical angle theorem. We're going to use this one today. Okay. Any others you can think of? If you got parallel lines, there should be a bunch we think of, right? Okay, we've got alternate interior angle theorem. Alternate exterior angle theorem. Con uh, not consecutive. We don't, we don't use consecutive interior angle theorem because that talks about angles being supplementary. 
adding to equal 180. So we aren't going to use that one. But we are going to use the other C, corresponding angle postulate. These are all regular ones because we would have to know the parallel lines first. Right? Remember the converse is when we're, when we're trying to prove parallel lines. Okay, So we wouldn't be using those. Um, those are probably our main ones. All right? Obviously givens would be an, another really easy one. These are our main ones. We have talked about um, the congruent supplements theorem and the congruent complements theorem, but we just don't use those very often. Okay, so these are probably your six main ones that I could think of right off the top, um, and you're going to be using these quite a bit. All right, so let's take a look. How in the world do we use this stuff? Okay, so I got three examples of just proving triangles are similar, and then we're going to do two examples that go a little beyond that. Okay, so here's our first one. So once again, pause the video, copy it down, and we're going to prove, we're going to talk about why these triangles are similar. Okay, so copy that down real quick and then come back and start the video up again. Alright, so I've got a right angle mark, remember perpendicular, perpendicular, we got perpendicular lines forming right angles, so angle Q is congruent to angle U because of the right angle congruence theorem. Okay, that's one set. It's pretty simple. I got a 50 degree angle here and a 40 degree angle there. Well, they don't match up but I can do some math and find the missing angle. So what's 90 plus 50? 90 plus 50 is 140. And then 180 minus that 140 gives me 40. So if you're doing this on a quiz, I'd like you to show a little bit of work there. 180 minus 140 is 40. So that comes right up into here. That's a 40 degree angle. Now I've got these matching. Now we could have come over here and added these and gotten 130 and subtracting gotten 50. Okay? We don't need to do both, because remember, we only need two congruent angles. We don't need all three. We can, but you don't need it. All right, so these triangles are definitely similar. Now, we have to name them in a correct order. So first one, triangle PQR is similar to triangle. All right, so P was 40 degrees. So which one over here would I have to put first? I'd have to put the 40 degrees, so that's letter V. And then Q was the right angle. So what do I have to put next? I've got to put U. And then obviously that leaves W for the last one. And why? If I asked you why on homework or on a quiz or on a test, you'd say angle, angle, similarity, postulate. Okay? That's how it works. It's not real difficult. Okay? You've got to remember the ways to get congruent angles though. All right, let's look at this one. This one we could do a couple different ways. All right, so... When you get something like this, though, it can get a little confusing. So if you need to draw them out separately as two separate triangles, go ahead and do that. All right, I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, but remember what these little shaded triangles mean? <clears throat> it means we have parallel lines, right? Okay. We could actually get any of the three angles here. Okay. I'm going to show you how to get every single one. So angle A, angle BAE is congruent to the other angle A, angle CAD. Why? Well, it's the same angle. It reflects the property of congruence. Okay, so that's one. I could get angle B right here. Now, I can't just say angle B, though, because there's a couple angle Bs, so i got to use three letters, angle A, B, E. And with the parallel lines and this transversal, I can say it's congruent to angle C. Now, why would these two angles be congruent? Think back to our reasons. Which of those would that be? Okay, dealing with parallel lines is these, right? So are they alternate interior? Are they alternate exterior? Are they corresponding? Let's look at that. They're not both in between the parallel lines. This one's in between, but that's outside. They're on the same side of the transversal, so they're not alternate. So that must be the corresponding angle postulate. Okay, now, we've got two angles. That's enough. Well, how do we have two angles, Mr. Oates? I, only, I see two in this triangle, but I only see one in that triangle. Well, once again, that's where separating it might help. So let me show you what it looks like if we separate. So I'm going to draw them a little bit smaller just so I can fit them on my paper. But here's A and B and E. And A has this one mark and B has these two marks. And then the bigger triangle, A and C and D. And A, it's the same angle. So it's got one mark. And C's got two marks. Okay, so do you see how we got two congruent angles? Now we could have gotten angle E angle AEB, so we don't get confused, congruent to angle D. All right? So I could put three marks here. I don't need to. Remember, we only need two. But I could put three marks here and three marks here. 
and that'd be three here and three here. Any two of the angles will work. Now that's corresponding angle postulate again. So I don't care which two you pick. As long as you get two of them and you have a correct reason, you're fine. So if I wanted that, if I asked you to completely explain this, you'd have to say reflexive property of congruence, corresponding angle postulate, and then we name our triangle. So let's name this first one, whatever order. I'm going to go with ABE. Triangle ABE is similar to, well, A has one mark, so I got to go with A first. B had two marks, so I got to go with C next, and D. And what's our reason? Angle, angle, similarity, postulate. All right? We're going to do one more like this, and then we're going to do two that are just a little bit different, okay? All right, so let's look at this one. Notice I don't have any parallel line markings, okay? Now, we could get parallel lines from this because angle J and angle M are what kind of angles? They're alternate interior, that's right. They're alternate interior angles. And if the alternate interior angles are congruent, I can use my converse to get parallel lines. And then once I have parallel lines here, I could use alternate interior again, regular this time, because I would have the parallel lines, and do N is congruent to L. But that takes a little while, and there's a much faster way. Okay, looking back at these, which one of these do you think might help us without having to go to the parallel lines? Do we have reflexive property? Do we have the same exact angle anywhere like we did up here with angle A? Not really. Okay, right angles, there aren't any right angles in there. Vertical, vertical, vertical angle. I, hey, I remember that one, that was an important one. Do we have vertical angles in here? Yes, we do. Okay, we got them right here. This angle K, angle JKN, congruent to this angle K, angle LKM. That's it, I got two angles. One was a given, one was the vertical angle theorem, okay, given here, vertical angle theorem here. So, I've got similar triangles. Triangle JKN is similar to, now, I've got to name it in the right order. So, J I said first, it's got a mark on it, so which letter do I have to put first over here? I've got to put M. JKN, all right, I did K second, it's got two marks, so I got to do K second, it's got two marks. And then N, there's no marks, so I got to go over here to L. Once again, Y, angle, angle, similarity, postulate. All right, okay, two more examples and we're done. Okay, so this one, I don't actually have letters on it. We're gonna talk about why the triangles are similar and then we're gonna use that idea to solve for X. Now, some people when they get this, they wanna go, oh, four over eight, five over X, I'm done, that's easy. I can set that up really easy and cross multiply. And if you do that, you're gonna be wrong. Okay, let's talk about why you would be wrong if you did four over eight equals five over X. If you do that, you're gonna get X equals 10. Okay? But that's a wrong answer, okay? So let's take a look at why. So let's mark this up a little bit. Let's get our angles. So we got parallel lines. We could do alternate interior angles. Okay, that'd be one here and one down here. I could do the other alternate interior angles or I could focus on the vertical angles. Okay, so I'll just go with the alternate interior again. Now, if we try to set up our proportion, which is what we want to do, we just don't want to do four over eight because it's wrong. We have to think through the order. So four is the side that goes from the one marked angle down to the vertical angle. Well, which side in this triangle goes from the one mark angle to the vertical angle, the one with no marks? Well, it's not eight, it's x. So four goes with x. If you can picture this, this triangle is not flipped down here, it's rotated down here. If I kind of spin this around, that's how it matches up, okay? And obviously it got bigger as it came down here as well. All right, so four doesn't go with eight, four goes with X. So when I set up my proportion, I have to do four over X equals. Now, I put four on top, the small triangle, so I have to do the five on top. I can't put the eight on top. And then the five, two mark down to zero marks, that's its side. See how eight matches that? Two marks down to zero marks. So we put the eight right here. Now we cross multiply. 5x equals 32. Divide by 5, these cancel. 
x equals 32 over 5. We reduce if we can. This can't be reduced, so we just leave it alone and put units on it. Remember, later on we're going to be doing inches and feet and yards and meters and miles and all that type of stuff. Okay, so we got to make sure we're careful with our labels. Some of you are getting a really bad habit of not putting labels on your answer. I want to see you put labels on your answers. Okay, last example. Copy it down, and then we'll solve it. All right, now, if, if you want to solve this one on your own first, that's fine. Some of you are going to make mistakes if you try to do it, and that's okay. It's okay to make mistakes as long as you learn from them. All right, so copy it down. If you want to try to solve it, go ahead and do that and then come back. If you aren't quite sure what you're doing, just come back right away after you copy the picture down and then we're going to solve it together. All right, here we go. So I got one angle here. All right, that's congruent. Do I have a second one? Well, I don't have parallel lines right now, so I can't really get that one very easy. Now, I could do the same thing I talked about in another one where I could go converse and get parallel lines and turn around, but that, that takes a little while. What we have is this angle up here is in both triangles. Okay, this angle, it's in this little triangle, it's also in the big triangle. So, reflexive property tells me that angle has to be congruent to itself. All right, it's just like this one that we did here, where if we separated it, this angle would be in both triangles. Same idea, okay? All right, so we've got that. We've got two sets of congruent angles, so my triangles are definitely similar. Now I've got to set up my proportion. You cannot do 6 over 8 and 9 over x. It doesn't work that way. All right, I'll show you why in just a second. You can't do 6 over 9 and 8 over x. If you do that, either one of those, you're going to get x equals 12, and it's going to be wrong. Okay, So let's talk about how we should do it. The reason we can't do that is because 8 isn't a whole side of the triangle. So I'm going to draw these two triangles off to the side again like I did on that other one. I'm going to make them a little smaller again. But I'm going to put the marks in there to help. So I've got one mark here and two marks here and a 6 and a 9. Okay, and on the bigger triangle, I still have the, the two marks up here and the one mark here. I have my x here, but I don't have 8 right here. Think about what this whole side is. How long is that whole side? What would I do with the 6 and the 8? Some of you might have thought multiply. Please don't do that. It's not 48. Okay, we add, right? 6 plus 8 is 14. That's what I need to use. So I can't do 6 over 8 equals 9 over x. I got to do 6 over 14 equals 9 over x, right? You can do 6 over 9 equals 14 over x. I don't like that one quite as much. It'll give you the right answer. The reason I don't like it is because it doesn't give you scale factor. If you do 6 over 9, the same triangle over the same triangle, that's not scale factor. Now, in this question, I didn't ask you to find scale factor, but if I did, doing 6 over 9 doesn't help. 6 over 14 helps me find scale factor. 9 over x. So we'll set it up. 6 over 14 equals 9 over x. Cross multiply, so I get 6x equals 126. We divide by 6, and we get x equals 21. I didn't have a label up here. It wasn't labeled as inches or anything, so I'm just going to put units, and we're done. Okay? So that is lesson 6.3, angle, angle, similarity, postulate. All right? Take good notes, re-watch this video or parts of it if you have to, right? but make sure you take good notes on it and show up to class with your notes so that you're ready for your short little quiz. All right, we'll see you guys in class.